Welcome back guys. Today we got another excellent blade from Tops. This one was graciously provided by East County Guns in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. They are the premier destination for guns and knives in North Idaho. So if you're looking for anything like that, definitely give those guys a call or stop in. They would be happy to help you out. Today we're looking at the Hog 4.5. And this one, um, I really like the design of this blade. It was multiple years in the making, I guess. The designer was David Norseman Williams. USMC Scout Sniper, and it's really unique. If you read his story on how he designed this thing, he basically took a piece of doweling, like, you know, closet doweling, and over his career designed the shape of this handle. So it was many years in the making, um, and, and the shape of the blade too. Um, you know, those Scout Snipers, he was basically in lots of wilderness training situations where he was out in the mountains for uh, you know, many days at a time and, you know, had to hunt skin rabbits and everything else. So this is one of those ones that definitely could be a multi-roll knife, even though Tops classifies it as just like their survival knife. Um, but he kind of wanted to be able to use it as a fighting knife too. Um, you know, bushcraft, all that stuff. It has some different features. You can notice this oversized loop here. Um, he was skinning rabbits, I guess, one time in the snow and he set his knife down it just sunk and it disappeared into the snow that'll happen if the snow is not really packed if it's like fresh powder and your knife will disappear it'll go all the way to the bottom and so he was like upset about that so he made this hole a little bit bigger and so he could attach like a carabiner and you know attach it to his pack or anything nearby um, plus it gave him a little bit of extra leverage if he was doing any kind of chopping situation there um, lots of uses he used it as like a prying tool um, even to like break bone on small animals to make like marrow soup and stuff like that. Really uh, a nice thing to have. It's not like a tactical thing or anything like that. It actually has a practical purpose. But yeah, let's let's look at some of the specs here. The overall blade length is 4.38, um, 9.75 inches. The whole whole blade overall length there. Um, you got a nice drop point with kind of a higher saber grind. Nice thickness. Let's see, blade thickness is 0 0.190 and they're using 1095 high carbon steel. Uh, hardness is 56 to 58, so definitely a more tougher steel there. Traction coating, it's got a good edge on it. Of course, made in Idaho, we always like to see that. It's a sweet setup. You got black linen micarta for the scales, and they are shaped and contoured. You can see that. Standard fasteners. Let's see how it fits in the hand. So, again, I got size large hands, and there's how it lays, and it, it does feel pretty good, I have to say. It feels good in the hand. There's no jimping on top. It does have a little bit of a, a finger choil there, kind of. Uh, more like a ramp, actually. I mean, it's going to keep you from sliding onto the blade, but it's not a tactical, you know, fighting type of knife, really, in my opinion. I think this is more like bushcrafty kind of survival role for sure. I like the way it fits. It seems like you really could use this, like, all day and not get any hot spots at all. I mean, for you guys that do bushcraft stuff, I mean, there's always a balance between a larger knife that can remove a lot of material quickly and easier and then you know having a smaller blade that can do your detail work uh, a lot of times guys will carry two blades carry a bigger blade and then a smaller one I think this would be just an ideal knife to carry to kind of do both if you could have just like one knife you know nice liners there sweet setup everything's you know well executed as you could imagine with tops. Points really nice on there. Just nothing bad to say about it. Fits really good in the hand. And definitely wouldn't give you any hot spots. Everything's nice and smooth, but this does provide traction. Obviously, the uh, micarta scales, they left them a little bit rough. I mean, I'm not saying they're rough, but like they're not smooth or like buffed or anything like that. So you do have some texture there. 
No, no. Thickness behind the edge. Let's look at the balance point. Yeah, it's right behind that first screw there. So it's about right there, which is pretty good. Let's look at the sheath. If you guys remember the Baja 4.5 I did, it had the same kind of sheath as this. Uh, leather dangler um, with the fire steel. And this one has a different whistle. It looks like this is like an aluminum whistle versus the other one was plastic. But yeah, can't go wrong. This is a great setup. If you want like a all-inclusive kind of packaged uh, blade here with your sheath, uh, let's put it in there, see how it fits. Yeah, so you're going to have some more coverage on the front if you're going through like bush or whatever. I mean, the blade's not going to take any damage really besides on the back of the handle there. It's pretty well covered. I know some guys are on horseback and stuff and they like to have their sheath come up even higher um, to kind of protect their knife a little. I don't think you're going to hurt this knife, uh, especially with that traction coating. And just 1095 is super durable. And micarta also is, is really durable. I'd say micarta is probably the second most durable handle material you could get um, with the readily available handle materials that are out there, like G10 probably being first uh, in my experience. But I do like micarta. It has a warmer feel to it than G10. Uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. Just wanted to show you that if you're in the market for something like this. Tops is a, a good place to to start. I mean, they make excellent blades and I can never say anything bad about tops. Till next time, guys. Take it easy.